Newton's three laws of motion contains all the basic principles we need to solve a wide variety of problems and mechanics. Free body diagrams is a diagram showing the chosen body by itself, free of its surrounding with vectors drawn to show the magnitudes and directions of all the forces applied to the body by the various other bodies that interact with it. So we can see in the first figure, a runner, starting a race with a weight of W and the pushing force exerted by the runner is F with the magnitude of or with a component of Fx and Fy. For the second figure, we have two basketball players with weight and the force N, which is act as an upward reaction exerted on the floor, is represented by force N. In third figure, we have the scuba diver with a weight of W and the water exert a buoyancy force on the scuba diver with F, buoyancy. And the truss is countered, uh, we have a truss, F truss, for kicking causes the water to exert a forward reaction force on the truss. And as opposite of this uh, force truss, we have the force drag, which is started by the water to against or oppose the motion the, the forward motion of the scuba diver. So in application or applying the Newton's law of motion, we are dealing with two types of problems. First, problems of particles in equilibrium, then particles in dynamics or in motion. So we have here a suggested strategy in solving problems. So first, Select an object to which the equation of equilibrium are to be applied. Second, draw a pre body diagram for each object chosen above. Include only forces acting on object. So it's very important for you know how to draw pre body diagram because the analyzation of the the easy way of analyzation of any problem is for you visually see. The, the interactions of forces acting on a body. Then third, choose a set of X and Y axis, especially when we're dealing with objects that are on, on inclined surfaces. So it's very important for you identify which is your X and Y axis. And lastly, apply the equation and solve for the unknown quantities. Since we are dealing for particles in equilibrium, most of it we are dealing with a body at rest or it moving with a net force of zero. That that's why that's or that's how it makes a body in equilibrium. And as we have already tackled, the summation of forces is equal to zero, which give us the summation of x and y component as also equal to zero. Now let's have an example problem. So attraction device is used with a foot injury. The weight of a 2.2 kilogram object creates a tension in the ropes that passes around the pulleys. Therefore, the tension forces T1 and T2 are applied to the pulley on the foot. The foot pulley is kept in equilibrium because the foot also applies a force F to it. This force arises in reaction to the pulling effect of the forces T1 and T2. Ignoring the weight of the foot, find the magnitude F. So I already have here prepared pre body diagram for our problem. So here's the T1 and T2, the tension forces along the roof. And we have here the mass 2.2 kilograms. And the force is started by the pit, which is represented by vector F. So in the right side, we have now set the X and Y axis for this pre body diagram. Now let's solve the problem. And we know that when we're dealing with 
equilibrium, the summation of x and y components are equal to zero. So first, let's have the summation of y component. So based on our free body diagram, which forces has y component? So we have P1 and P2. So the y component of P1 is P1 times sine 35 degrees. For T2, we have minus or negative T2 sine 35 degrees. Since T2 is directed downward, which is give us a summation of zero. Therefore, we have T1 sine 35 degrees is equal to T2 sine 35 degrees. So we could able to cancel sine 35 degrees, which give us T1 is equal to T2. This is our first equation. Now let's move on with the x component. So P1, T2, and F has x components. So let's get the x component. So we have P1 cosine 35 degrees plus T2 cosine 35 degrees. And for F minus, since it's directed to the left, so we have minus F equal to zero. So we can move or transpose F on the opposite side. So we're going to have F is equal to, and we know that P1 is equal to T2. So we can replace T2 in the second equation with T1. So we have T1 cosine 35 degrees plus T1 cosine 35 degrees. And simplifying this equation, we're going to have 2t1 cosine 35 degrees is equal to f. Now, look at this point. So at this point, The forces acting on it is the weight, which is which has a mass of 2.2 kilogram, and it has an equivalent reaction of T2 based on the third law of motion, which give us which give us the idea that T2 is equal to mass times gravitational pull, which is equal to 2.2 kilogram times 9.81 meter per second squared. And based on the first equation, T2 is equal to T1. So we can have this P1 is equal to T2 times mass times gravitational pull. And applying this in the second equation, we can now solve for F by substituting the value. So we have F is equal to 2T1 or T2, whatever, times cosine 35 decrease, which is give us equal to 2 times T1 is 2.2 kilogram times 9.81 meter per second squared times cosine 35 degrees. Therefore, the force is equal to 35.36 Newton. So this is our final answer. Now let's have another example. We have here an automobile engine has a weight W whose magnitude is 3,150 Newton. This engine is being positioned above an engine compartment. The position, the position the engine the worker is using a roof 
find the tension T1 in the supporting cable and tension T2 in the positioning rope. So here's our um, figure and the equivalent free by diagram. So we have T1 here and T2 and weight which is 3150 uh, 3, newton okay so let's solve this problem by getting the summation of x component so only t1 and t2 has my uh, x component so we're going to have t1 negative T1, CC directed to the left, um, okay, then cosine, ah, uh, no, let's use sine, 10 degrees. Why 10 degrees? Because based on this figure, okay, so 10 degrees is between the T1 and the Y axis. Let's see how our 10 degrees. Therefore, to get the t x t one x we have to use trigonometric identity of sine. Same with um, for the y component, we're going to use cosine theta. So let's proceed in solving. Now for the x component of t two. So plus t two. sine 80 degrees okay so based on this illustration we can see that t the x component of t2 is by getting the sine okay so let's click this one with equal to zero therefore T1 sine 10 degrees is equal to T2 sine 80 degrees. Or T1 is equal to sine 80 degrees over sine 10 degrees. Okay. T2. So this is our first equation, which we will use later on in solving um, for what we are looking for. Now, okay, let's proceed with the summation of y component is equal to for t1 we have t1 cosine 10 degrees minus t2 cosine 80 degrees minus the weight which is equal to zero so let's substitute the value of t1 with sine 80 over sine 10 t2 so we're going to have sine 80 over sine 10 times T2 times cosine 10 degrees minus T2 cosine 80 degrees minus W is weight is 3150 Newton equal to 0. Therefore, we can solve now for T2. So T2, you can factor out T2 here, sine 80 times cosine 10 degrees over sine 10 minus cosine 80 equal to 300. At 
Okay, so simplifying this one, we have T2 now is equal to the weight 3150 all over sine 80 times cosine 10 over sine 10 minus cosine 80, which give us T2 now is equal to, use your calculator to solve for this problem, And make sure your calculator is set in degrees since our, the, the angle we use is in degrees. So take note of that. You can see at the upper part of the monitor of your calculator, letter D, therefore, is in degrees. If the letter R, then it's in region. Okay, so our T2 is 582.10. Okay, so we can solve now for T1 using the first equation. So T1 is equal to sine 80 degrees over sine 10 degrees times T2, which is 582.10 Newton. Therefore, T1 is equal to 582.10 Okay, 3,301.23 Newton. Okay. So now, let's have your checker understanding. So try this, try to solve this problem. And write your, com your answer in the comment section.